Welcome back to American Truck Simulator. Here's me truck. This is Red Thunder. A slightly shortened or downsized Red Thunder. And um, I guess this is my hometown. This is Dallas in the background. Um, let's see. It's pretty early in the morning. What is it? 7, 7 a.m.? Let's, let's take a look. Uh, 7 a.m. on a Saturday. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get uh, the truck started. All right. So... Yes, I have downsized the truck, and there's a good reason for that. Well, actually, there's two reasons. Um, the first reason is... Uh, there's a pole here. <laughs> the first reason is uh, I'm using a new engine to the W900. Um, this is the Packard MX-11. This engine's been in use in the uh, Steel Productions engine pack for a time now, but I hadn't introduced it to the W900. W900 uh, does or can use the MX11, so W900S. Now, this is my W900L, except it's the day cab version. And that's the reason why I'm using the, the slightly shorter cabin today, because um, it's been a while since I've driven a day cab, and I've changed the paintwork. The other one as well is that a couple of weeks ago, SCS released the uh, a tuning pack for the camera W900. So we've got things like um, new headlights, da -da, new mirror colors, new grills, um, new new um, exhaust work at the back, so on and so forth. Anyway, I'll bring up the map for a second. So you're getting this uh, completely raw again because, hey, where's my cursor gone? There it is. All right, we're actually going, so wait, there we go, we're going to Lawton. But I started out at Texarkana, I took a diversion to Dallas because I really wanted to stop to kind of see this. Let me see, I could go north that way. But I told it I wanted to go uh, by uh, Wich Wichita Falls. I may have mispronounced that. I don't think I need that anymore. Hey, see, if I take that off, it wants me to go north. Uh, I'm trying to get cover roads I haven't explored yet, but and I could just, just take this access road here, I suppose. But I, I wanted to go um, this way because there's a chunk of roads I haven't covered here either. I'm just going to go that way. Anyway, you know what? Um, let's jump back into the cabin. Let's go ahead and get moving because otherwise I'll be here for a while. Let me see. Can I do a U-turn here? Probably could, but let's just go around this, this building side. Now, this is an interesting sign. Let's switch to my XR view again. This looks like it's the uh, foundations of a, I guess, a skyscraper. Kind of feel I should go and actually check this out and see if this really is uh, being constructed right now. Anyway, I'm getting a bit of hitching, a bit of lagging um, in my uh, certainly on the video that I'm seeing this end. It might be smoothed out um, in the recording. We'll, we'll see. Okay, so. Yes, this is the MX-11 engine. I mean, it's an 11 litre engine from the Packard MX series. It has a very similar torque curve to the MX-13. So peak torque is 900 RPM. This is the baby of the range. This is a 355 horsepower, 1250 uh, foot-pounds of torque. And just to be that a little bit different today, I just bang the microphone again and again. We're using the uh, Eaton Endurant uh, HD from the real Eaton Fuller transmission pack because this is a transmission that Packard essentially rebadge and call the TX12. That's interesting. It's construction, we'll see if I can zoom in. It's construction workers here, yeah, halfway down. Okay. It's still early in the morning, it's a Saturday, so um, I must be putting in the overtime. Yes, I'm using the, uh, the, the TX12, or the, or the equivalent of, with a 285 differential. Now this, um, this is kind of tall. 55 miles an hour is about a thousand revs. But it's well suited to this engine, even though this engine is sort of low powered. I mean, it's not performant, but it, 
expect it to be. It's only 355 rated horsepower. Turn left. Right, so, duck in here, turn left. Other changes I've uh, taken advantage of with the tuning pack. We've got red mirrors as opposed to chrome or silver. Zay doesn't, who doesn't like a bit of chrome? Um, I don't mind chrome, but it'd be nice to have everything matching. And a uh, slightly different paint job. That's not actually from the tuning pack, but the exhaust uh, is colored um, red as well, red and white. And I'm supposed to do this view for a couple of reasons. One is it's a real camera view and who doesn't like it? And two, the tuning pack separates the bonnet or the hood from the rest of the cabin or maybe the sleeper from the rest of the cabin because they vibrate independently. You'll, you'll see the, the front mirrors vibrating a little bit. Not right now because we're not up to any speed. I'm supposed to stop here. I suppose you could say that Red Thunder is a bit of a fleet specification right now. This is an automated transmission and a low powered engine. Keep left. I know, more of an owner -oper operator type truck, but there we go. Okay, you'll lift off completely here because we're going to be doing a U turn. Exit left. Actually, I've got a separate lane here, so I think I can just take it. Well, I guess I will. Yeah, those. Those red lights don't apply to me. Just gingerly take it around here. Can't really see the front corner of the truck. I'm also used to the long wheelbase um, W900 as well, and this is some. Well, it's roughly a state shorter. Okay. Go around here. I think we're good on the right. I'm going to go anyway. They can wait for me. Hey, there we go. All right. So uh, hit cruise control, I've got a red light, but uh, tell it I want to do 40 and we'll just lift off coast up to this line. Oh, there we go, it's changed. Tap resume. My engine's up to, almost up to temperature on the coolant gauge. Uh, it's up to 200 or 190 on the oil, so it's a temperature. It's so configured like this, the, the transmission will be shifting into top gear at pretty much 55 miles an hour. And it will do 50 in top. It, it's, it's 900 RPM about a speed it will take. I recognize this road. Well, this at least looks like the Dallas North Tollway. Must be that because um, limit's now 65. Okay. So observations and thoughts about the MX11. Um, well, stock sound for a start, so we don't get excited over the sound. And I mean, the reason why you would use the MX11 in preference to the um, let's just cut my speed for a second. Engine brake. The reason why you would use the MX11 in preference to the MX13 is um, two words. Fuel consumption. Right, a little bit here. Yeah, see, it's, it's put me in top gear. Tell us if you're 55, and off we go. Yeah, so fuel consumption, or I suppose one word, that might be mileage. You like 900 RPM. You like being top low down. I guess who didn't put their phone in silent mode. Yeah, let's do that. We'll do that now. I yeah, should know better than this, really, let's face it. Uh -huh. Whoops. Don't text and drive, kiddos. Ah. You end up crashing. Or nearly crashing. Okay, done. Yeah, it's, it's mileage. And, um, you know, if you want a fleet truck, you squeeze the most miles per gallon you can from your fleet because every point one of a miles per gallon you can calculate the difference that makes to your bottom line not so critical in ATS because the economy is not as particular over things like fuel consumption I would say it's probably quite accurate to how the trucks are model I mean Yes, there's a bit of a simulation element there, but it, it's more of an arcadey type feel. Keep left. 
and this is the, the point my comparison ends because yes I've driven cars but I've never driven a, even a big rig let's tap up to 60 okay now if you know the area you'll know exactly what I'm coming up to here this is the, uh, the six flags on the left you go past. Ta da! Try to keep in my lane, David. Yeah, I suck at driving like in that view. There's no one on the roller coaster right now, I don't think. Well, SCS maybe missed Mr. Trick there, who's to say? And Denton, that is the, uh, the town closest to where I live. We're coming up to that. I need to be in the left two lanes. Yeah. I think I do, so let's uh, wait. Maybe I was in the right lane. Or well, the correct lane. Yes, I think I was. Okay. It says 30. I think we can do 55. Looks like I was wrong. Yep. There we go. I, uh,. Off ABS and traction control. I shouldn't need traction with this little power. But ABS, you probably always need that. Okay, tap up to 65 and um, set everyone's calendar for tomorrow because that's what time we'll get to that speed. Choose my. I may regret this decision to use my uh, the right lane, but we'll find out in a second. No, yeah, okay. It's my exit. Okay, so, uh, so far so good. so far about the MX-11 and this uh, this cargo. So today we're, we're only holding 33,000 pounds. Not the heaviest cargo by a long stretch. But my observations of the MX-11 are exactly as I thought that they would be. It's fairly well suited to hauling. It, yes, you, you probably need more. But then this is the bottom of a total of six MX-11 uh, engines in the family. There's, we basically go 355 to 455 horsepower and if you need more power than that then you know the, the, the recommendation is um, well you go to the MX-13 or you go to the um, ISX-15 or like X-15 or in, insert name of your preferred bigger bore engine which to be fair the Kenworth is pretty much limited to um, well if you've got an older truck it may have come with a Detroit Diesel Series 60, and they could be having a 14 litre. But otherwise, you're looking at something from a common state. There's no Packard MX-15. Um, there are Caterpillars, of course. You can go up to a C16 there. Um, you can go slightly bigger if you need to. So 3408 if you want a V8. Or even a C18 if you find one to convert. But I got lost on the tangent. So yes, this, this, this engine's performing exactly as I hoped it would. Um, it's not exciting, um, but like I say, the reason we get this is for mileage, so let's take a look. Well, right now, it's showing an average of 7.4, but I've burnt half a tank and not all of this has been on this, this trip. So 7.4, I dare say that's not my return, it might be. But from what this is, from a really chunky truck, I would be fairly happy with that. And I'm also trying to do 65. Where this low-powered version of the uh, MX-11 suffers is it's constantly accelerating. It's constantly working at that full rate. Way up to Oklahoma. So, it's always accelerating. I'm going to drop my speed into 45 for this tall road. 
as always accelerating, it's always running at full power, and if you're not going at top speed, then your efficiency is not as good as it could be. So, use a bit of engine brake here, I think. I'm going through these a little too quick. There we go. So it's constantly working at a full rate. I do notice, hello officer, that uh, if you've got a more powerful engine, you spend a bit less time running at full power because you get up a speed. And there are definitely sweet spots. Depending on how you drive, the gearing, the cargo, that sweet spot seems to vary an awful lot. I've got a lot of data. Sometimes my sweet spot is a 14, 50 foot pound torque engine. So in this case, it'd be something along the lines of a 400 um, horsepower MX-11. It can be a 1650, um, or it can be an 1850. Again, it does depend on the engine range in question and the gearing and etc. etc. For my MX-11 um, runs, I've not got enough data to really come up with an idea of what the most efficient one will be. Early indications are that it, it's going to be a 1450 or maybe a 1550 rated torque. I sound a bit gravelly today. Clearly not enough coffee. So, checking my dashboard there. I've got 44 minutes of game time before I get to my destination. So, I'm going to get there about 1. Seems to be the idea. Let's just drop my cruise to 60. See if I can save a little fuel because I've got plenty of time. This is a world of trucks trip, so I've got as long as I need. And for real world time, I need to get there in 18 hours. Well, it's not going to take me that long. Okay, is this my turning? Yep, this is a turning coming up. Not this one here, not Rogers Lane, but the next one, I think. Yep. I'm going to lift off completely all the way now. And um, we'll coast it in. It's probably going to pick up speed. Yeah, yes, it is. It's a bit of engine brake here. Let's look at it. Aldi. I need to use this lane. There's another vehicle here. He's going to let me in. He's going to be a bit of a drama queen about it, but he, he let me in. Use the engine brake down to about this speed. Start to turn in. Let's set the cruise control in just a second. That will do. Good enough for me. Thing rolling. How's that? Okay, so that trains from the left, which means it, it's easier to, to join the, the main highway again. Got a red light anyway, so kill the cruise. Coast to the light. And I'm just 20 game minutes away from my destination. Go straight. a little bit there. I messed up my braking. But look at the visibility we can see on, on, on this road, this route, this view, that's fantastic. Um, my traffic is set to be uh, default, so stock, so uh, basically 1.0, 100% abnormal. Um, I could increase that if I felt the need, but I don't really feel the need. Sometimes the game feels a little better when it's, it's busier, but with this amount of traffic, this, this I think works. What time is it? I've just been looking at it. Okay, almost one on a Saturday. So I imagine it would be a little busier than this. I would have done it, but I've got to drive. Squeeze on a bit of power. Don't really want to hold everyone up. Let's switch to the wheel camera. There we go. So you can just about see how the sleeper is vibrating separate to the rest of the body. Or the cabin maybe is vibrating separately. Because of course this is a day cab. Don't forget David. Oh I'm glad I uh, I'm glad I was being very careful towards uh, around me. Um, that car merged. Okay, I'm gonna be in the left hand lane. I guess we're turning right after the water tank. Manually shift up, but let's lift off completely. Signal, engine brake, checking my mirrors. Dun, dun, dun. Still getting 
feeling that bit of hesitation or lag, at least when I play the game. Like I say, it may not be reflected because I record my videos using NVIDIA Shadow Play and um, that records it at 60 frames a second. So, on the game, I've told it to run it up to 84. So that hitching might simply be that um, it, it can't cope with 84, but it's fine with 60. Not sure. It looks like I haven't been to my destination, which is good. Not going yet. Again, more, more stuttering. I stopped a little too short yet again. Uh -huh. Gotta turn left down here, so we'll take the left hand lane. Ease it in. So, it's pretty much a drama, fuss free trip. There's just not that much going on that's exciting here. This engine is not outrageously powerful. I'm kind of curious to see what my mileage is. So I've not been trying that hard, but I've made some concessions. Here's a concession here. I'm coasting all the way into the yard. Let's see. Ah. Okay. So where do I need it? That looks. That looks troublesome. But I'm going to go ahead and try it because what's the worst? That oh gosh, it's down that ramp. Okay. That'll be fine. I might just use the external view for this, I think. Oh, yeah. This would have been harder in a longer wheelbase truck, but... Uh, she's a little shorter today. That is not a short person joke, if you happen to be short watching this or listening to it. I'm going to pull forward a little bit more. Quite a bit more, I think. Check around me. Yep, okay. So, will I be using the MX-11 more? Yeah, if I'm using a tough economy mod, absolutely. Because, you know, that 0.5 of a gallon, if my economy I'm using is tough enough, it does make a difference. Does the performance bother me? Yeah, this is kind of sluggish. I'm probably going to use a, a more powerful MX-11. The 415 one... Missing, I'm messing this up. The 415 is quite a good compromise between um, the ability to burn fuel and the ability to make progress. Yeah, I've, I've messed this up. Um, I don't think I have enough uh, in front of me to be able to correct it. Well, it might be okay. I'm gonna give it full right lock. Yeah, I'm gonna have to just correct and go forwards. Okay. So, yeah, let's give it full left lock. If I can straighten this up a little bit, I might be able to recover this without too much difficulty. That's not bad, actually. Okay, straighten that up. My plan here is to, to get the, the back of the trailer where it needs to be, and then give it some right hand lock. Oh, I'm picking up speed too, too quickly. Some right hand lock to kind of straighten it up. And let's start that process now. Okay, now it's straight, give us some left hand lock. I'm awfully close to the see how close am I? Yeah, I can't actually see how close I am. Um, I mean the game says that that's that's fine. But let me just go ahead and pull it forward. I'm probably touching the touching the dock. Okay. And put it back into reverse. That'll do me. Okay, so my last observation here is um, it's got the Angel Eye style headlights. Let me go ahead and shut it down and then turn off. And let's see how well we did. 516 miles in total. That, that was longer than it really needed to be. I did take quite a big diversion, but I really wanted to look at the Dallas uh, Dallas line. And 71.7, uh, so that is about seven miles per gallon, um, slightly more, not quite the 7.4 I thought it was, or I hoped it was, but still seven to the gallon, which for this truck, um, I'm happy with. 
Could I have gotten better mileage from a more powerful MX-11? Yeah, I probably could have. How about even using the uh, MX-13 Epic? Yeah, I probably could have as well, and that's 405. But I didn't, and I enjoyed it. Speaking of which, I hope that you enjoyed today's video, and if you have, let me know. You can subscribe for more, and I'll be back in the next one. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Goodbye.